So move forward with that a little bit, if you can, and talk about what it felt like in the 70s at the moment to suddenly be feeling this sense that, that the world was a sexist world, if you like, because still in the early middle 70s, you were an unusual. I mean, there yes. was a feminist movement to be sure, yeah. but it was by no means all of society. No. Oh God, no, no. All, all the changes were to come, not, not then. We were in our hundreds and then we were in our thousands. Uh, but when I was living through it, it felt like we were in our hundreds. And at first I thought it was just New York City and, and very quickly I felt uh, its presence in all the major centers, our major centers, Cambridge, Berkeley, all the places that people like us gathered and cared about. Like it us being women intellectuals. Women or, intellectuals, right. yeah. And not just intellectuals, women of spirit, women of temperament, women who, this is what I learned early, that really to uh, respond to this was temperamental, was a matter of temperament. Mm. And this is the meaning of social change. At first, it's people of temperament who say, ah, yes, that's it, that is the truth. Just as Stanton said, all of history is determined by a small group of people who see things with penetration and clarity, and the others say, oh, it's not that bad. And they, they say, yes, it is that bad. And they keep on saying it in those strong terms. And then, it, you know, and then as, as the years go on, um, if it's true, it changes the world, and which is, is exactly what it has done in these 40 years. But in those years, it was thrilling. It was just thrilling mm. to be young and alive and uh, in New York City and be a feminist in the 1970s. It was as if we were meeting every day, every night. You know, there were meetings and parties and dinners. And everyone, as, some, as, an, as an old German geneticist said to me, who she, I converted her, and she said to me, everyone was interested and everyone was interesting. Yep. And that was exactly the way it was. You could have parties of 30 women and you never wanted to see anybody else in your life. It was exhilarating. And in those years, you I mean, just to go on defining uh, and, um, and speaking your mind and saying, can you believe this? Look what I realized yesterday. Look what I saw today. Um, it was, it was really, it was revolution. I mean, it, didn't, it wasn't revolution in the sense that we weren't revolutionaries. We were dissidents. We wanted in. We wanted a more perfect democracy. democracy. We did not want to take over the government by force and violence, or even really see a different society. We wanted our place in that society. But still, it felt revolutionary, because there was no other place in the world you ever wanted to be, except in the company of these people. Um, mm -hmm. It was so exciting to be seeing yourself in history, and to be, to be redoing your own experience all the time, to be reanalyzing it every minute that you were alive. I mean, you know, I woke up in the morning and I was singing. I mean, I, yeah, it was exciting to be alive and to be thinking these did, things. Did you have a goal? I mean, was the goal to change the world? Was the goal to construct a the feminist? The goal was to make the whole world see what we saw. The goal was anarchy in that people were constantly saying to us, but what about the children? What about the family? And people like me were constantly saying back, fuck the children, <laughs> fuck the family. We're here to tell you how we feel now. Whatever happens tomorrow is not really my concern. I want you to understand how I see myself in history and how you have seen me, and that I am not as you have described me. That's my job now.